This is so exciting. <laughs> this is what I drove all the way from Colorado to be here for. It's huge. <laughs> Right, now we just gotta get it home safe. <laughs> and then I will show you what we got. So here it is. Can you tell what it is? <laughs> it's an Ursa Minor top, camper top. We'll finish uncrating it and take a good look at it. Ursa Minor did a very good job of creating it. A lot of two by fours, a lot of really long screws. So we have it uncrated most of the way. It's mounted to this bottom pallet piece. Just uncrating it took several hours. It's like dismantling a little tiny house or something. <laughs> a lot of pallet wood. You can see right there how much wood we've taken off already. And all these bolts. <laughs> so next, which won't be today, but in the next couple of days, we have to get this off the pallet. But before it can go on my Jeep, we've got a lot of other work to do. I've got to get the top off my Jeep, the rack and the solar off the top of the top of the Jeep first. That top is actually going to go on to Kevin's Jeep, which means we got to take his soft top off. And then we're going to, we're going to have to use the lift in the garage, you'll see. And to lift all everything up, set it down on the vehicle, it's just going to be moving a lot of vehicles around and stuff. So we're going to back this up into the garage for now and rest for the rest of the day. Good morning guys. Today is the day we're going to try to put that camper top on my Jeep. But before we can, we've got to do a lot of jostling of vehicles. One of the first things we have to do is get the rack and the solar off the top of my Jeep, set it aside, and then work on getting the soft top off of Kevin's Jeep because this hard top, which used to be on Kevin's Jeep, is going back on it. I feel like we just put all these up here. We decided to go ahead and start taking my top off because we needed to let this soft top dry before we fold it up and we don't because we don't want it to get melted. Where's the bowl? There's the bowl. And it's off. We just gotta get the soft top off of my Jeep now. The weather is cooperating so far. If this is dry, we're ready to take it down. I think it is. And we got the soft top off of my Jeep. It's ready to receive the hard top. 
And then we got the hard top hanging in the garage and off of Cindy's Jeep. We just gotta pull that out and back mine in there. All right, so we got the Jeep switched around. Ready to put the hard top back down on my Jeep. We're just playing musical Jeeps here this morning until we get everything situated. So after you put your top on, make sure you close your window before you pull out of the garage. Fortunately, the window didn't break. It hit the garage uh, ceiling up there, but it broke this cap off, which is fine considering that's all that happened. Got lucky. We have the Ursa Minor hoisted. It was a lot of work. <laughs> we just had to take our time with, time with it and do a corner at a time. And it took both of us or I would have filmed more. But uh, anyway, now on to the next step. So the next step is hooking up this wiring harness for the lights that are up inside the Ursa Minor, which will connect to this. Now the instructions want us to hook it up so it comes out over here and then runs down the B pillar and then underneath the front driver's door and out to where the battery is. But Cindy has power on the Jeep. So I'm actually gonna run it through the um, plastic underneath the roll cage and then into this box and then into the power that we have here. The other thing is it comes with a third brake light, which is this white wire. And that one's gonna have to run across the sound bar over to the B pillar on the other side. And then the instructions talk about pulling up uh, some panel and getting to a wire harness and finding the proper wire to splice into. We'll worry about that when we get to that step. But um, that's what we're gonna work on next. So I'm in here working on the wiring. I've got it all ran through the roll bar there behind the plastic into this box. I just got to put some loom around it. Cindy's busy out here taking the crate apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, it started raining, so we backed the Jeep up as far as we could, and the top is just kind of hovering over top of it right now while Kevin tries to finish up the wiring on the inside. Yeah, I just gotta get it to a point so we can drop the top down and then the rest of it I'll be able to do from inside the Jeep or just, you know, outside the Jeep. So we're gonna start lowering this and the back area will probably be pretty easy because we'll be able to bring this, this board out pretty easy. The concern is going to be the front one, but we'll get it out of there somehow. <laughs> we have the top sat down on the Jeep. It still has to be bolted down. To do that, we're gonna have to remove the back of this box to get to the brackets, which we kind of thought we might have to, but now we know we definitely have to. The other one, we shouldn't have to do that because it's easier to reach. Uh, it looks pretty good. <laughs> it was scary, let me tell you. We, uh, <laughs> we just slowly inched it down. I didn't do a lot of recording because it was just a lot of communication between us. One person on one side watching the corners and we finally did get it set down on there. We, managed to pull it out of the garage without airing down so it did and we still were able to get it in and out of the garage that's good uh, so once we have that everything bolted down kevin still has to go through and finish the wiring over there for the brake light and we'll show you as we go all right so right down there's where the bolts go and we have these brackets that that back wall to this box attached to. Kevin's just making sure they line up now and 
then we just have to screw them in. So I'm gonna leave these loose and get them all started and we'll tighten them once we get the, the backboard back in here, then we'll tighten everything up so we can get it all in the right spot. That's going in pretty easy, so I'm in the same hole. That's very good. Let's get this top one back here, back down in the same hole. Somehow. Good morning. <laughs> we are back at it again this morning. We still have to wire the brake light on the back of the Jeep. But before we do that, we want to go ahead and install the back window. That way, if it rains, it'll be dried in. And then Kevin's going to do the brake wiring. And I've got to get the tops and everything back on the boxes inside. Then we'll be able to give you guys a tour when they ship it. It comes in a separate box. And Kevin's already taken some of the foam pieces out. But looks to be in good condition. Hopefully, we when we pull it out of there, it'll still look good. This is actually a Mopar window. Factory window. It's got a nice new wiper nut cap. I can take that and put it on mine. He's not getting my wiper cap. Uh -uh. <laughs> Nice. Windows on. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. It didn't take any time. Let's see how this closes. It's good. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, watch your fingers. Cleaning. The windows installed, as Cindy said, and her Jeep was a factory soft top Jeep, so it didn't come with the provisions for the rear wiper. So there's nothing down here for this to plug into to, to make the wiper work. But this piece here, we are going to go ahead and plug into here, and then we'll put it up into the hole, so that'll just kind of give it a clean look. And then this, since we're not going to be using, just slides up through here. And I believe we're going to go ahead and pull this all the way through. And if we ever had to put it back in, I think we can loosen these and pull this panel down and get it back in there. But we're going to pull this out and then we'll store it away somewhere safe. So we'll have it in the future if we ever need it. But yeah, so this is coming together. We're almost done. Now we can have the rear window wiper system installed, but it's about 1100 bucks or so to have that done. And it has to be done by a dealer because they have, not only does this not have a switch for it, but they also have to go in and do something to the computer system. And so I don't care about a, a rear window wiper. If I ever decide that I do, you know, it's worth considering, but not for that price right now, no. Yeah, so that's plugged in up there now, and that just gives it a cleaner look. And we don't want to cut these wires in case we ever do decide to do anything with the wiper. So.
So this is the wire that I need to run for the third brake light that's in the back. And I'm gonna run it down through the speed pillar inside underneath that plastic. And then once I do that, I'm gonna run it down underneath this piece here. And underneath this, there's a large wiring harness. That's what I need to tie into. There's a wire in there I need to tie that into, or splice it into, and then that third brake light should work. I got the wire running through this B-pillar. I had to take this handle off right here so I could pull that piece of plastic off, and then I got it run through there and put it back on. I still have that panel there off. Then I'll show you something on the other side over there. So the wire comes out right through here. And then that thick wire harness right there is what I need to get into and find a white wire with a green stripe. Now they're saying there could be two of them. And I want the bigger of the two. And I found the green and white or the white with the green stripe right there. I didn't see another one in there and I looked pretty good. I think I'm gonna look just a little bit more and see if I see one. I wanna make sure I do get, if there is two of them, I wanna make sure I have the bigger of the two. But I have a good feeling that's probably the wire. I'm just gonna look a little more and double check and make sure I have the right one because I don't wanna mess this up. Not sure how well you can see that, but I wanted to test this wire. So I've got my tester stuck into the wire that I think it is, and I'm grounding over to the Jeep. I'm gonna have Cindy step on the brake for me. And that's my ground, there we go. We got 12.4 volts. So that's the wire I want. She can let off the brake and the power is gone. So looks like I got the, the correct wire. So I have this all put back together now. The wire is spliced into the white wire with the green stripe. And Cindy's third brake light here is working just fine when she presses on the brake. But the one for the Ursa Minor top is not working. So I checked all my connections to make sure everything was correct. And I'm really confident that it is. Because we checked at the pigtail. There's a pigtail over here, I'll show you. So this pigtail right here is, um, has the ground and the power for the lights inside the Ursa Minor, and then the other third wire is for the brake light. So I checked power here, and every time Cindy pressed the uh, brake, I would get 12 volts right here. So I know I got power from the splice that I made over by the passenger door, going to this pigtail. So the next thing I did is we took this brake off, this brake light off, and tested power at the wire that comes out of that brake light. And when she presses on the brake, I have 12 volts there. So I know I got power and everything going to where it's supposed to. I think that's just a bad brake light and it's not working. So, um, I'll probably call Ursa Minor and, and talk to them and see what their thoughts are. Well, I got some good news on the third brake light. And Cindy said something that made me start thinking about the grounding or the ground wire. And I didn't, uh, I don't remember what she said, but um, I grounded it to one of the grounds that go to the fuse panel that we put in for the Blue Eddy. And that actually never got grounded to the chassis. And once I grounded that to the chassis, the third brake light started working. So you can see up there it's working now. It was a ground issue. And so it was pretty much my fault for not grounding it to the chassis. The quickest way I could do that was um, I came from one of the ground wires from the fuse block and put it behind this bolt right here, which is grounded to the bracket that holds the top down, 
which essentially grounds it to the chassis. So everything's good. I don't have to contact anybody. We're happy it's working. Are you guys ready to see the inside? <laughs> First thing you have to do to open up the Ursa Minor camper top is unlatch these front latches and they're easy. You just push it up, turn this to where it's facing outward so it doesn't catch on this when you're lifting it. And you do that to both sides. Now, we just need to go inside and undo a latch. Now, you can see the latch here. You just gotta pull straight out and you'll hear it click. And it's unlatched. Before I do that, let me show you the, the hatch. There's two of these. I haven't even taken the other one out of the box yet, but it's the other one sits right here. So it can be completely closed off if need be. Once you have the front unlatched and that unlatched, you just got to push it up. You can either push it from the back, I think. I haven't done that because I find it easier just to do it from the inside. And now I can stand up in my Jeep. <laughs> so once you have it up, there's a pole here that can be extended and put into place. That way you don't have to worry about it trying to fall on you, although I don't think it will, but it just kind of makes you feel better <laughs> to know that it's secured. As you can see, the tent is made out of a canvas. It's a sombrella fabric. And probably I will go through and put a little bit of seam sealant on here just to be on the safe side. Now the zippers are two-way zippers. There's a zipper on this side and a zipper on this side and I had brought them together up here in the corner but they can be brought together wherever so that way you can open it as little or as much as you want for ventilation and still have some privacy if you want. One thing I do wish Ursa Minor had done is put some sort of strap right here to hold these up out of the way. But I can always kind of tuck them down in between the cushion and the side or I can make a strap easy enough like a little little velcro strap there would be nice the other thing you can do is unzip these completely let me show you that these just roll up and you can open this whole thing up and then they tie off right here there's a velcro loop on the inside you bring it around and you put it through this buckle here pull it back around on itself and velcro it closed so it's nice and neat so now you have a view that's completely unobscured except for the center section right here but this is nice <laughs> There is a dome light and a switch up in the front near the rear view mirror turns on all the power up in the tent. And then the dome light, you just push on or off. There are also two reading lights on both sides. There's one like this, it's flexible. And these are just touch. I really like that feature. The cushions are really nice. There are four in total, and they are custom made to fit inside this whole tray area. I have this one, of course, out right now because I'm standing in the hatch area. Underneath the cushions, you can see the hatch itself, and I'll show you how that's removed. 
there's a little latch underneath that slides over and when you close it you want to go on the way I just had it and over here there's a little piece that lines up in this notch here so to lift it out you'll want to lift this side where the little latch was that I showed you out first so that you can then slide it out of the little notch that I showed you here <laughs> and then you can just move it over to wherever you want to put it like I said before there are two of these I'll probably just leave one at home when I'm traveling solo because I'll probably always want this one side open for easy access in and out of the tent area. Underneath the cushions, it is just a plastic pan that goes up the sides. And the entire top is like that. In the corner here, there is a number. And that is the number of this particular Ursa Minor top. So you can see it is number 217. That means it's the 217th one made. By the way, these cushions are zippered cushions. So that makes it easy. I can take that off and clean them if I need to. So that's always a plus. Here's what it looks like with all of the cushions in. As you can see, there is plenty of room for two people to sleep. Of course, if somebody wants to go down below, they're going to be crawling over each other to move the hatch out of the way. But someone can sleep below also, and that makes this Jeep a three-person camper. <laughs> On the inside, it definitely changes the Jeep interior a bit. It has carpet on the ceiling and on all the sides. I opted not to have the window on the driver's side. As you can see, that's carpeted. It makes it a little bit darker in here, but I'll be able to lighten that up with some design features. I already started putting the curtains up. These hooks I had on with 3M tape before, and now they are being held on with Velcro. And they seem pretty strong. Hopefully it'll work out long term. So now let me show you how to close it. It can be closed from the outside or the inside. I prefer closing it from the inside because it's easier for me to reach. But a lot of people I think stand on the bumper or somewhere and then pull on the strap to pull this back down. But before they do that, this pole has to be released and we need to make sure there's no tension on this strap. There's a strap like this on each side. And I like to just pull on these straps to bring it down. And it takes a little force. And while I'm bringing it down, I straighten out the canvas. And as you can see, there's plenty of room here to store some bedding, which is also really nice. So I can finally get all my bedding out of the way. And now I just go around to the back and make sure it clicks down. You hear that click? Go to both sides. And now I have to do the latches in the front. And it's just the opposite as before. You turn the latch around so that it'll catch on this, this time bring the latch down and it is closed it's that easy <laughs> I really am happy with this 
I'm gonna have a lot of fun camping adventures in it, I'm sure. Now I need to go through, get all my stuff back in the Jeep. I've got cushions that go here and the fridge and the blue eddy and <laughs> the lights have to go up. We've got to get the solar on top of the Ursa Minor. All of that's going to be in the next video. We have so many things planned for this Jeep still. This year we're hoping to not only give the Jeep a little bit of a lift, but get a wench on the front and I don't know, a few other things. Maybe we will even put a locking differential on here. So I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and come along, not only on my travels, but for the future modifications that we do. I'm excited, guys. This is a game changer. It really is. <laughs> so thank you for watching, and I will see you next video. Bye, guys.